Now, so far we have seen two previous iterations in terms of this model of iron I'm about to test today. And those two models were probably two of the best overall sets of irons that I've tested in the past two years. So the question is just how good are these compared to those other two models? And if they are any good, we've got a real interesting development in the PXG iron lineup. So for me, the 0211 X Core is a real interesting release from PXG because effectively what they've done is put all the magic dust that's in the latest Gen 5 model, their top of the tree iron, inside of what is their budget line. What kind of difference does that make? You see, the question is just how good can PXG afford to make these irons? How close can they get to their premier Gen 5 model? Because that might become an issue. And we will, of course, talk about that issue very soon. But first of all, we're going to start with something that I think PXG get absolutely spot on each time they release a set of golf clubs. And that is, of course, the way they look. And I think that uh, this iron in particular will appeal to the masses, whilst the kind of uh, the style and the look that has been associated with typical PXG, I call it nuts and bolts, I think people can have an opinion on that that they don't perhaps take to the look and the styling of it. It's very unique in the way it looks. This is a lot more generic in its styling, but they've done it extremely well. Very minimalistic in its design. They've changed the logo on the back. And again, I really like what they've done there. They've limited this sort of plastic insert, which again, just adds a little bit of bling to it, but not as uh, pronounced as it was in the previous model, which I wasn't a massive fan of. And then you can see on the back side, there's a bit of a satin finish, which again, just adds to the quality of the finish in terms of its look, but then also adds to the way this top line is chamfered into steel, then into that satin look all gives it a lot more uh, visual ap appeal at address, in my opinion. And I'll talk about that and how it differs from the previous model very shortly. And did you know that ever since PXG started manufacturing golf clubs, they have produced the thinnest face in terms of iron technology? And what that gives it is, uh, well, it gives it a lot of flexibility, but they've built in, in the new Gen 5s, a little cutout U-channel that you'll see close up here. And what, again, that just aids that sort of spring effect, I suppose, gives more flexibility into that face. And that's a key introduction, what happened in Gen 5, that has now gone into 0211 X-Core. Then this X-Core 2, what is it? Well, it's the polymer that fills the gap, the void that's inside these hollow bodied irons. And what makes that so great is it plays a major part in how they sound, how they feel, how they perform in terms of forgiveness. So we've got two key pieces of technology that were in the premium model of Gen 5 that are now in 0 to 11 X-Core 2. So is that an issue for PXG? So many of you are wondering right now, what is the difference between previous generations of 0 to 11 and the new X-Core 2? Well, there's some technology differences that we've already talked about. That introduction of that magic formula inside is the biggest development. And uh, the second one is visually the way they look. Like I said, there's a, uh, a clear move. They've kept the kind of uh, identity of 0 to 11, but they've again refined it that little bit more. I love that uh, satin finish that they've put on the back side of the club. I love the fact that, like I said, that decal has just been uh, lessened visually and the new logo for me looks different. But it's the profile that is a significant change in the fact that from heel to toe, it visually looks different as does the width of sole, but as does the overall shaping. There's a difference between the wedges through to the longer irons in terms of the bounce on the soles and the progressive offset as well. But I'm pretty much sure that was uh, the case in the previous models as well. So from the top line, not huge differences, apart from the fact the new model is a little bit more compact and I think it'll appeal to the masses, whereas the 0211 previous model just put itself in that super game improvement category maybe. Now we're not gonna look at performance in terms of numbers today and dry ball data, that's for another day. This is very much my sort of first impressions, first look, and we'll do some closer analysis of the performance, like I said, in some head to heads, maybe with some previous models. The first noticeable thing is these are lofted at the stronger end of the spectrum, 28 degrees being the seven iron, let's use that as the barometer. 
But what I'm seeing out here on the fairways is they do pretty much what we've seen in those strong lofted irons in that the launch, ball flight, whatever you want to call it, defies the strength of loft. So uh, these things are, are launching into, uh, well, as I say, into orbit right now. Let's see what we can do with this eight iron and, and see where it gets to. You can see their ball flight is absolutely towering. That's probably the best strike of it today. Oh, it's just pulled up at the front edge there. The performance, I'm sure you want to know, I've waffled on a lot about what's inside these clubs and now they look and all the rest of the things. But my first impressions in terms of performance is that the issue that they're potentially causing is the performance, it could be too good. Now the direct-to-consumer market is certainly hotting up and it has done in the last few years and PXG have very much have been a part of that and uh, I still think where they hold a little bit of an advantage is the ability to still get custom fit for their product and uh, in the UK there are plenty of custom fit days and in the US they've opened numerous stores over this last 18 months to allow the ability to still get custom fit so that's a key key factor. The other thing that really uh, drew my attention the other day when I was researching the product is that they're even giving this sort of 60 day money back guarantee. So the idea that you can almost buy and try the product is, uh, well, it takes a little bit of the stress and concern that you might have, but this whole model means that and the competitiveness of that direct to consumer model means that you us as golfers are ultimately going to get uh, well i think more and more options and uh, prices should continue to fall which can only be positive considering there's been a lot of negativity in the last couple of years about some of the price hikes that we've seen You know, that's an interesting one because uh, I've hit the ball all right today, not as good as I was swinging it yesterday. And uh, in most instances, almost every instance, I've got away with it. And that one in particular was right off the bottom grooves. And I always say it's almost better to test these clubs when things aren't going so well. And that being a typical example, I just don't know how that ball traveled to where it did, to be quite honest with you. And irrelevant whether it be PXG irons today, I think the biggest development in iron technology over the last few years has been the ability to get things wrong in terms of the centerness of our strike and get away with it. And that's certainly the case there. And that's certainly the case today in general, because like I said, I haven't been finding the sweet spot, but the ball has been getting out there and I'm not really seeing any great loss of distance. So X-Core 2, that flexible U-channel, the thinnest facing golf, whatever it is, it seems to be working. In fact, I'm going to hit another ball. Let's see if we can try and do what we were doing there, but get it out the middle. Right. New swing, still a work in progress, as you can appreciate. Oh, my word. That was a new swing working well. That's flew out there. That was a five iron, by the way. Now this seems like an opportune moment for you to get involved down in the comments because uh, the biggest deal for me has been the change in perception of PXG over the years and uh, that mainly being due to the change in the uh, well the pricing but ultimately I think 0 to 11 and the introduction of 0 to 11 played a major part in that change of mentality because they brought out a club for the masses if you like and I still believe that that's what it is today a club for the masses a real real good product at a real real good price and uh, I don't think this is going to be too dissimilar in my evaluation of it all so I want to know from you what has your mentality changed I've asked this question before how many of you right now are gaming PXG product and how many of you I reckon have got a previous iteration of uh, 0 to 11 irons in the bag and I've got a feeling it could be quite a few of you right come very close to uh, hole in one on here yesterday let's see if we can uh, do something similar different pin same club, same tee position. And then we're gonna draw this one to a close. Let's see if the new swing can just hold up for a little bit longer. Right, here we go. Well, not quite, I'm afraid. That's down the left-hand side, working its way back. And it's gonna miss the green on the left-hand side. But I think 
We can pretty much end this. I've had enough irons to give you my first impressions at least. And I can also tell you what I think could be the issue for PXG. Yeah, I think a perfect opportunity to leave it there, certainly in terms of my first look and first impressions of these irons and pass on that information as quickly as I can to you. Um, look, they look really, really good. I've said that shelf appeal is superb. The performance has been as I would have expected, to be honest with you, no great surprises. I think, that, again, every time you see a new model come out of a product right now, there are never massive leaps forward. What I do think that's happened here is that there's a change again in the sound and feel, and that X-Core 2 is the material that makes that happen. I think that's a major deal because it's a cast club, don't forget, but they've got an incredibly good sound and feel out of them. And for me, as you know, that's a key issue. Not to you, all of you, I do know that. Um, so they've got a great looking set. They've then got, let's go back to this price point of a hundred pound a club in the UK, at least is what it is today. And that, as you know, can be very changeable with PXG right now. But a hundred pound a club means again, it's an extremely competitive set of irons for you to buy. And that's the bit I like. You've got a broad spectrum now in terms of what you can choose from. And like I said earlier, that can only be a good thing for you. I also like the fact that in these 0211s and they go right through to gap and sand wedge, giving you plenty of options in terms of streamlining your set, not mixing up different wedges, which again, you know, I'm a bit of an advocate of. I said there was an issue for PXG and my issue potentially is these are getting too good. And what I meant by that is that if you're buying Gen 5s, at whatever they were, 220 a stick right now, maybe 249 when they first got released and these are 100 quid, you're starting to ask yourself right now, what is the major differences? And yes, there are differences. There's that uh, precision in which they can custom fit. There's the better feeling from the forged iron. But when you start to include the elements that you've got in your premium product into your budget model, then the gap is certainly getting a little bit closer. And I think that the danger is that, uh, or is a positive, I don't know, is that all of a sudden their mass sales comes from this 0 to 11 range, which uh, is ultimately not miles behind Gen 5. And that's, a, uh, that's an interesting move yet again from me. Their product gets better and better and their pricing structure gets more aggressive at the same time. And I think they are uh, got to be a real thorn in the side of a lot of the major manufacturers right now. I just leant forward and uh, grabbed this tripod because it's a bit breezy and was about to uh, blow over. So. We'll call it a day. Give me your feedback down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are these an issue, but a positive issue for PXG? I'll see you all soon.